Daisy Bates, born November 11, 1914, departed November 4, 1999, was an American civil rights activist, publisher, journalist, and lecturer who played a leading role in the Little Rock integration crisis of 1957. Lucius Christopher Bates, born April 27, 1904, in Liberty, Mississippi, departed August 22, 1980, in Little Rock, Arkansas, was an African-American civil rights activist and the husband of Daisy Bates. He founded the Arkansas State Press newspaper with his wife in 1941. He was an active member of the NAACP and was one of the plaintiffs in the Supreme Court case, Cooper v. Aaron, which was filed by the NAACP, so the decision made by the court in the Brown versus Board of Education case would be properly enforced. Outside of producing the state press, Bates was active in Little Rock, Little Rock's NAACP Arkansas branch and served as head of the Legal Redress Committee in 1950. After the move to Little, Ri Little Rock, the Bateses decided to act on a dream of theirs, the ownership of a newspaper. They leased a printing plant that belonged to a church publication and inaugurated the Arkansas State Press, a weekly statewide newspaper. The first issue appeared on May 9, 1941. The Arkansas State Press was primarily concerned with the advocacy journalism and was modeled off of other African American publications of the era, such as the Chicago Defender and the Crisis. Stories about civil rights often ran on the front page with the rest of the paper mainly filled with the other stories that spotlighted achievements of black Arkansas. Sons. Pictures were also in abundance throughout the paper. The paper became an avid voice for civil rights even before a nationally recognized movement had emerged. Daisy Bates was later recognized as co-publisher of the paper. Bates and her husband were important figures in the African-American community in the capital city of Little Rock. They published a local black newspaper, the Arkansas State Press, which publicized violations of the Supreme Court's desegregation rulings. The plan for desegregating the schools of Little Rock was to be implemented in three phases, starting first with the senior and junior high schools, and then only after successful integration of senior and junior high schools would the elementary schools be integrated. After two years in stone of progress, a suit was filed against the Little Rock School District in 1956. The court ordered the school board to integrate the schools as of September 1957. The battle for the soul of Little Rock had indeed begun, and the Bates entered vigorously. Realizing her intense involvement in dedication, education, and school integration, Daisy was the chosen agent. After the nine black students were selected to attend Central High, Mrs. Bates would be with them every step of the way. As the leader of the NAACP branch in Arkansas, Bates guided and advised the nine students known as the Little Rock Nine when they attempted to enroll in 1957 at Little Rock Central High School, a previously all-white institution. The students' attempts to enroll provoked a confrontation with Governor Orville Fabus, who called out the National Guard to prevent their entry. The guard only let the white students to pass the school gate. Eight students out of the nine were asked to go back home. One student, Elizabeth Eckford, didn't receive the message from Daisy Bates the previous night and was met by a white mob outside the school as she tried to find the other eight students that morning. The mob threatened to kill the black students. Members of the mob harassed not only activists but also northern generals who came to cover the story. Bates used her organizational skills to plan a way for the nine students to get into Central High. She planned for ministers to escort the students into the school, two in front of the children and two behind. She thought that not only would that help protect the children physically, but having ministers accompanying them would serve as a powerful symbol against the bulwark of segregation. Bates continued with her task of helping the nine enroll in school. She spoke with their parents several times throughout the day to make sure they knew what was going on. She joined the parent-teacher organization, even though she did not have a student enrolled in school. She was persistent and realized that she needed to dominate the situation in order to succeed. And as always, if you liked the video, please share it with your friends. If you learned anything, please comment what you learned below. Have a wonderful day. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh. Oh, no, I'm going to ride on the wind, and 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 I'm